Hello and welcome back to Pro Design Channel. Today we are looking at the art of interior lighting. Whether you are a beginner or looking to refine your skills, we'll cover everything from basic setups to advanced techniques. So let's get started. First, let's set up our scene. I've chosen this simple studio apartment model. Ensure your scene has basic materials applied as realistic materials greatly affect the perception of light within your render. And you can also check out my video on the best render setting for your workflow. Without further ado, let us get right into it. Wait, before we add any light, it's crucial to understand different lighting types. In interior design, we mainly deal with key light, fill light, and ascent light. All these lights can be further categorized into two, namely natural and artificial lights. Key lights are your main light sources. Fill lights help reduce shadows caused by key lights and ascent lights are light specific areas or objects. Let's start by setting up an ambient light to simulate natural light coming from windows. We'll use an AGRI map for a soft and natural looking light. You can check out my video that explained in details how to add HDRI into your scene. For the sake of this video, I will turn off my sunlight because I will not be using that. I will rather choose to use my dome light, that is my HDRI light, to simulate the natural environment. For this, I will turn the intensity to 30 and come to the color texture. Click on the texture slot, import your preferred HDRI file. and come to the texture placement. Turn the rotate H to minus 309. And let's come to our scene. Let me turn off my dome light to see how my scene will look like naturally without adding any light to the scene. So without adding any very light to my scene, I have this dark interior. We have no other lights within the scene, only the default V-ray light is visible from outside and that is not what we are going to use in this video. So let us stop this. Now we've checked our scene without the dome light. Let's check what our scene looks like with our dome light. We can see the difference almost immediately but our scene is still there. Let me come to the V-ray buffer post render and come to the layers. Let me choose exposure. Then I want to bring the highlight burn a little bit down and bring this exposure a little bit up. After that, let us stop this. We see the scene is getting brighter, but we see dark spots around. This occurs in renders where there are no enough lighting within the scene. So you have these dark spots. Let's go back to our scene. And I would like to increase this to about 80 and that is good for now. Let's check what we have in scene. All right, so this is good and let's stop that. Now we want to add a fill light. We have an ambient light which is our ADRI and it's serving as the natural light, which is the HDRI dome light here. So we want to create a plain light behind our opening to simulate a secondary source of light. Like we said, key lights help reduce shadows caused by the key light. So we have the key light here, and then this key light obviously will strike some parts primarily, and then we leave some parts shaded and dark. So you need to brighten things up by adding fill light. So in this case, we want to add a fill light, come to the real light, and come to the plain light, the rectangle light. Click on that, and we want to quickly draw a rectangle light. Now that we have our first fill light, let us check our scene. For this particular fill light, we want to use it as a secondary light and a light that will not be seen within the scene, will not be visible within your scene. So to do that, come to the Viri Asset Editor, come under the light and you see it here. 
let's name it as fill light window fill light all right so that we recognize that and we leave it first at this but we want to come to the parameters we want to leave it as the white color as it is then the options below here come to the invisible just make sure it is checked and also your reflective surfaces does not have to reflect it as a light source we don't need to see it at all within the scene so now that that is done we can also do something increase the directionality to about 0 0.05 the directionality will enable light to travel farther from the source we want to complement the adri light right that is what we're doing so we want to just make the light travel farther and also to brighten up the scene and reduce shadows within the scene now that we had our first feel like let us check what we have this is coming up well we might still need to reduce the intensity of the feel like here but before we do that let us reduce the highlight bone i think the scene look okay and can just brighten things up i think we are starting to get a very bright scene and that is good so let us turn this off and let's move to the other light we need to insert other key light we should have a key light inside the lamp then we should have key light here as well but well, the key lights here we've uh, visually represented that by adding emissive texture the emissive texture will not be enough in your scene so once you had that you need to insert a real v-ray light within it so firstly i need to place a bulb here so to do that let's come to our light and pick our sphere light drag and then place so once i've drawn that i want to come to the V-ray asset editor and come to the sphere light. Let me name it as lamp bulb. Give it 300 intensity and we want temperature at 3545. Let's leave it as visible because it represents like a source. So we have a key light here and then we need a fill light. Once we've added this, we can come also to the V-Ray Asset Editor, come to the Spotlight, then we want to try and check what we want. Let's use 3545 five, since that is what we used for our key light. And let's try and check out what we have here. Let's turn this to 10,000. Guys, you can see already it's starting to, to take shape and we can, we can reduce the penumbra angle. We can see as we keep reducing that it's forming a kind of ambience around the chair here which I really love so to even do further let's reduce the temperature here and we are having something very dramatic around here let's stop this so we have this kitchen cabinet here I would love to create some lights underneath the cabinet above so let's just do that with our rectangle light just click on rectangle light and come here then scale once we've scaled that we want to come to the setting let's name that good we want to give that 30 intensity we want to come to the settings and give it 4000 Kelvin then let's check out how this look like looking 
subtle let's leave it as this then there is one other place that would love us to check before going into the advanced which is the IES I would like us to add some other lights here as well so basically we are still using our rectangle light let's see how this place looks like okay now it looks great but i don't like the white you can choose to use any temperature that you like let's just name this all right now that we've named that let's leave the intensity as 30. so i would like to bring the temperature a little bit warmer and let's see the result and this is good now that we have our fill light our key light then we have some ascent light let's check the scene all together so this is good as it is then let's check another scene nice this is good the next thing we want to look at is like a kind of advanced lighting techniques that is the highest light for those looking to push their skills further let's explore the techniques of IES light. The IES light profiles allow for realistic light distribution making real world lighting fixtures. Now we would like to create our IES here on the spotlight and we're supposed to have them also around here as well. You cannot use the IS light without firstly selecting a file. So that's the first thing you do. You select your file and then you drop. Once you drop that, this file will serve as the simulation, the kind of light effect that your light source would mimic. Now that we have our high yets within the scene, let's go ahead and set them. We want to have the intensity of our yes. Just check this at 850. Then we want this three four three five four five. Okay. The same thing for this just drag i want to copy this just drag this upon this and then come here that's 850 and that is what we want we've succeeded in setting our key lights our fill lights and our ascent light let's check what the rendering looks like Okay. With all the lights in place, it is time to make final adjustments. Tweak the intensities and color of each light to balance your scene. Now let's talk about render settings that will bring out the best in your lighting work. Come 
to your render element right click on that and select light mix to know more about light mix check out my video on light mix once you've selected your light mix make sure it is set as group instance and once that is set come to your render settings and we want to make some final editing and then we go on to check what we have in your background we want to insert our dome light the dome light file so just copy come to your environment then paste as instance we want to increase that to 30 let's come to our ambient occlusion turn it on then set your radius to 4.5 then the occlusion amount to 0 0.8 then V-Ray set V-Ray denoiser as your denoiser and your preset to mild the advanced camera as well try to play with it to check which one favors your scene and with all this set let us check out what we have And now we have this as the result of what we've just rendered. It looks interesting, but we can further control the light from the light mix. And these are the list of all the lights within the scene. Uh, particularly, I would like to control the IES light here. Let's come to the IES light one and um, okay now we can tune this to let's say three let's check is lights let's tune this to ten oh okay let's tune this as well Let me see 10 for this. Uh, we can start to see the change within the scene now with the IES lights going up to 10 in intensity. We don't want to overdo that. We can see now the change in the mood of the interior. Let me just reduce that to one as this as well. Let's reduce that to one. The self illumination can turn this up to let's say five and we can see all these areas are starting to brighten up let me even make it 50 and we can see we are starting to have a glare and because we have the sharp the sharpen and blur toggled on we have this noise all about so the more you have light the more with sharpen and blow the more you have all this noise around so be careful how you turn things how you play with it just make sure you do things softly you understand so guys this is how you can turn things around with your interior let's come to the exposure let me tune this down a bit to look a bit more natural then come also to the light mix i want to come to the dome light then the cabinet lights let me okay make it warmer and make it two in intensity the dome lights let me reduce the dome lights intensity and that's a wrap on our interior lighting tutorial remember good lighting can make or break your renders so spend time experimenting with different setups if you enjoyed this tutorial please like subscribe and hit the notification bell for more tips happy rendering